If you saw our previous video on specific motorhome Wi-Fi solutions, which you'll find up here, you'll know that we bought this Category 7 Huawei router for under £30, which is the same as you get in motorhome Wi-Fi's 5G Flex Kit. We've been using it for a while now, and in this video we'll do a deeper review and share why we're impressed with it and some hacks and tips for getting it to perform at its best. So if you've got one or are thinking of getting one, keep watching. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing. So this is the Huawei B535232. First, let's do a quick rundown of things we like and things of note. It's easy to find and can be cheap to get. There are plenty of second-hand ones around. It's a Category 7 modem with native 12 volt power, and it has Ethernet 2.4 and 5.0 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It has external antenna connections, a configurable setup through the mobile app or a web interface. It's unlocked so it can be used with any SIM and there are a few extra hacks that make it even better. But things to note are it is a home consumer router, so not as robust as an industrial professional solution which we've talked about before. It only has 2x2 two two MIMO connections for the antennas rather than 4x4 four four that some of the industrial routers have. But having said all that, we think it's one of the best choices of simple off-the-shelf consumer plug-and-play 4G solutions around today. We're not going to run through the basic setup because it is dead easy. What we're going to talk about now is some of the more advanced features that this has that some of the routers don't. On the configuration of the router, you can see and manage all the devices connected to it. As it's unlocked, you're able to set the APN for any SIM for whatever country you're visiting. As we mentioned before, it has 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. And unlike some routers, you can switch these on and off independently and name them different names. You're also able to manually set the channel of the Wi-Fi, which is great for avoiding interference. Unlike some routers, you're able to see the cell ID you're connecting to and the true level of the signal that you're receiving. Being able to set in the configuration whether you use the internal or external antennas is something that's unusual, but really useful. And why is that? Well, we'll set this to use the external antennas which you would think will be the best performers wouldn't you and then we'll run a quick speed check to see what we get looking at the signal strengths that we get we're getting a pretty good signal we're in the middle of a town so it's not too surprising let's see what speeds we actually get we're using our pointing MIMO 3 antenna so we would expect to get pretty good speeds and yet we're getting a good set of bandwidth there of around 16 megabits per second down and 15 megabits per second up. But now let's try that same test on the same server using the internal antennas, remembering that the router is actually inside our van. We're still getting a pretty good signal, so let's see what the speed's like. So where we are on the internal antenna, we're actually getting better performance than on the external antenna. Now, those of you that have seen some of our other videos will probably understand why. On the internal antennas, it's getting a 4x4 MIMO connection, enabling it to aggregate more signals together. Whereas on the external antenna, it's only getting 2x2. Two two. But with this router, there is a bit more we can do. As, although we've got quite a lot of configuration there already, with a little bit of code, we can actually get to a higher level of configuration and select what bands we're actually connecting to. So let's now have a look at doing how we do that, and I'll show you exactly later how to set this up. So you can now see at the top of the screen, we've got all the information that we need, including what bands we are connected to on the main and what bands are allowed we're also able to go in and specifically set what bands we want to use. So at the moment we're using the main on band one and aggregating across other bands. So let's go in and we're gonna change that.
So we're going to connect to just band one and then run the speed test. We're still using the internal antennas here. So we're getting a good 24 down and 19 up. Now let's tweak it. So we're connecting to band three, which although we can connect has no download at all. And finally, let's try band 20, which has a few megabits per second, around four up and four down. So now let's switch over to the external antennas and redo that test on band 20. We were getting four up and four down, and we're now getting 16 down and five up on the external antennas on band 20. Now let's try band one on the external antenna. And this is where the problem lies. When we weren't sure what band we were connecting to on the external antenna, it was actually connecting to that band three because it was the strongest, but that had the lowest bandwidth. Now we're able to play with the bands. We can see that actually band one and band 20 are much better performing. So we've connected it to band one and now we've put it back to auto. So it'll lock to band one, but also aggregate any other signals and look at the speeds we're now getting. This is why the importance of being able to do this level of configuration can really help the performance of the router. Just in case you are wondering, here you can see us running that extended menu on a tablet and on a phone. So how do you do it? Well, it's a simple case of setting up a bookmark. When you want to enter that bookmark, the URL is a piece of JavaScript and you can find a link to this inside the video notes. Once you've pasted this JavaScript in and saved the bookmark, all you have to do is open the admin page and once you're logged in, use the bookmark to run the JavaScript, which opens that new menu at the top of the page. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.